What is going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Roadrunner here with another After Effects tutorial. Today we're going to be making numbers count. Let's get into it. So this right here is a motion graphic that I started to create for my documentary and I'll go back and fix this motion graphic up before it actually goes into my documentary but it's always good to get an idea down and a rough idea at the very very least. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go new composition, going to title mine pie chart, hit OK, then I'm going to double click the type tool and I'm just going to create a zero. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that one. Then I'm going to use the shift arrow keys to move this over just a little bit. Then I'm going to double click on the duplicated one and I'm going to change this to a percentage sign and hit enter. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my effects and presets and I'm going to type in slider control. I'm going to drag that onto my zero. Then I'm going to toggle this down and I'm gonna go into text and open up the effects and open up slider control so the slider is showing right here. Then I'm going to alt click on the stopwatch on source text. Then I'm going to use the pick whip tool to go over to the slider. What you're actually going to want to do is you're not going to want to close this just yet. We're actually going to go math dot round and then I'm going to go open parentheses and I'm going to delete this close parentheses and I'm going to go all the way to the end and close my parentheses. If you do not do this, it will give you like a ton of decimal points and that is not exactly what you want. And now if you go down to the slider, you should be able to adjust this number to any number you'd like. So I'm gonna reset it. I'm going to click the stopwatch to set a keyframe at zero. Then I'm gonna go ahead a few seconds in my timeline to, I don't know, two seconds or so. And then I'm gonna go to 75%. And I can actually move this percentage over just a little bit. Then I'm going to hit U to close those up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Q on my keyboard and I'm going to cycle through here until I get to the circle. Then I'm going to hold Shift while I draw a circle around the text. And I'm going to put this just around there. Then I'm going to go into Add and I'm going to go down to Trim Paths. I'm going to toggle that down. I'm going to change this to 75 and I'm going to set a keyframe. Then I'm going to hit home to go back to the beginning and change this to zero. And then actually I'm going to hit the tilde key to make this full screen and hit U to bring up all my keyframes. And you just want to make sure the keyframes match here for your pie chart. Otherwise it would be kind of awkward if your trim pads was at 65% while this was still at like 60 or something. So you just want to make sure that they match up and they do. Once you scroll through, you'll see the numbers going up and the pie chart going around. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to highlight these all and hit F9 on my keyboard to easy ease them. Then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate this circle and I'm going to change the stroke color to, I don't know, like a nice greenish blue, hit OK. I'm going to take the stroke down to about 30 and I'm going to toggle down here. I'm going to go into ellipse, stroke, and I'm actually going to add some dashes. This is just something I kind of like. This is what I did in my example. Now it gives you the option to change the dashes. If you go to, let's say 25, they will be much bigger. Whereas if you go down to a number like five, it will be a lot more of them and much smaller. So I think for my example, I used 20. I think I actually use 15, but 20 looks good as well. And then what you may notice with my example here is that the dashes are actually moving. So that's really easy to do. Here's how we're going to do that. We're going to go to the offset under dashes and we're going to alt click the stopwatch and I'm going to type in time times 25 and I'm going to hit enter. And if you kind of scroll along here, you'll notice that even after the number stops and the circle draws up to 75%, you notice these dashes keep moving. I think it's just kind of a cool thing that gives it that extra movement to it. So one thing I didn't do that I would highly recommend people do is to label your layers. So the first one here we can see is the dashes. So we're going to type in dashes. And then this one we're going to change to purple circle. 
And we can actually change the color here to give it a more visual representation. Now, something that I definitely like to do in a lot of my motion graphics is I like to put drop shadows on quite a few things. So I'm actually going to change this one to white, hit OK, change this up to 100%, change the distance to zero, and the softness to 15. And I would like this to also match the percentage sign. Now, you may not notice it while I have the transparency grid toggle, but I can just click that off. Notice it gives it a little bit of separation between the background and the numbers right there. Let me get rid of that. Then I'm going to put the drop shadow onto the dashes, and I'm going to change this one to 100%, change the distance to zero, and change the softness to 10. I'm going to copy that one, and I'm also going to put that one on the purple circle. And you may not notice it very much, um, but if I go to the dashes and I toggle it on and off, you notice it just pops a little bit more. And before we finish up today's tutorial, feel free to hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon to get notified when I post new content. Also, check out my gear list in the description. Thanks so much. And lastly, the thing that I did with my example that I haven't done here was I created a background. So I'm gonna go new, solid, and I like this cyan color, so I'm going to hit okay. I'm going to drag this to the bottom. I created a gradient, so we're gonna go into our effects and presets, and we're gonna type in gradient, and we're gonna to go to gradient ramp, drag that on, I changed it from linear to radial, then I dragged the start point of the ramp down here to about the center, and then I used the dropper tools to get these exact colors, because I wanted to stick uh, along with that color scheme, and I changed the end of ramp here, which is actually down here, but you can change the number up here in the effects controls, and it kind of gives it this you know, cyan background with a little bit of a vignette, which I think is pretty cool. Then we're gonna go back over here to Fractal. And we're gonna click on Fractal Noise, drag that on there as well. I changed the blending mode to Soft Light. And I actually turned the opacity down to about 25 or so. And you can play with these settings. There are so many cool different settings when it comes to Fractal Noise. Whether you're changing the fractal type, the noise type, you can invert it. You can also change how it blends with the original, but there are so many options. I end up using fractal noise for so many of my backgrounds in a vast majority of my projects, just because there's so many opportunities and so many combinations of cool backgrounds that you can create with this. So definitely check out fractal noise. And we're going to also alt click on the stopwatch on evolution. And we're gonna go time times do 30 and you may be wondering what that does if I solo just the background layer and I kind of scroll around you notice the background changes these little patterns will change here and that's just something I like to do to kind of give it a little bit more movement and to kind of keep your background of your motion graphic a little bit captivating however if you think this is too fast you can always come down here and change this number to like 20 or something like that definitely play around with it there are so many options when it comes to expressions and then what i like to do just to kind of keep my composition clean is i go down here and i click on the bottom one and hold shift and then i hit command shift and c to pre-compose this and i'm going to type in percentage with circles and from here you can also scale it up so let's say i didn't make everything big enough and I can go over to my Align tab and align it to the center of my composition. And I can move it around a little bit if I want it to be more centered. And there you go, a super easy pie chart where your numbers are counting up. Thank you so much everyone for joining me for another After Effects tutorial. As always, comment down below what you'd like to see in future videos. Thanks so much, take it easy.